Hello and welcome to today's mini training. We are talking about how to beat emotional overwhelm at work. If you are joining me live, say hello in the chat. I wanna make sure I can shout you out and say hello to you. Let's talk about what we're going to be covering today. So in this mini training, you are going to discover the root cause of emotional overwhelm at work. We're going to talk about how to identify your own personal patterns and ways to put an end to the cycle of fear and doubt that comes with emotional overwhelm at work. So as I said, if you are joining today, say hello in the chat. I want to know where you are watching from. As we're going along, please share what is standing out for you as well. I'm just gonna take one quick second to make sure we are live on both Facebook and LinkedIn. Perfect. Looks like we are. Great. So before I go any further, I want to properly introduce myself. I am Melody Wilding. I'm a professor of human behavior at Hunter College in New York City. I'm also a licensed social worker and executive coach, and I am the author of Trust Yourself, Stop Overthinking and Channel Your Emotions for Success at Work. My specialty is helping smart, driven people just like you get out of their own way and stop doubting themselves, also that they can lead more effectively and actually reach their full potential in their careers. I am also the creator of a program called Resilient. This is a three-month coaching program that's specifically designed to help you regain your confidence, master your emotions, and reach your full potential at work. Resilient is open now. It is only open for a limited time. Enrollment closes on Tuesday. And this is the last time the program will ever be run fully live. So I'll share a little more about this in just a little bit, and I'll make sure the link is in the comments later. So for over a decade now, I have worked with hundreds of high potential leaders at some of the world's biggest companies. My clients are individual contributors, their managers, directors, their senior leaders at their organizations. But regardless of their industry, their title, their rank, they all have one very important thing in common. And that is they are what I call sensitive strivers. Sensitive strivers are high achievers who think and feel everything more deeply than most people. So this refers to about 15 to 20% of the population, 15 to 20% of people who are genetically wired actually have different brain functioning that allows them to pick up on more, more of what's going on both in their environment and within them. So these people process the emotions of themselves and others more deeply. So I wanna share the story of one sensitive striver with you that I think you might be able to relate to. So Luciana, one of my clients, she had a habit of stepping in and that habit had actually helped build a multi-billion dollar business. She had spent the last 15 years of her career really leading, organizing, staying late, and if she had to, doing the work on behalf of other people. Now, she was in her third year as senior vice president of communications for a manufacturing company, and she felt totally and utterly burned out. And I want to know if any of you can relate to being there yourself. So let me, let me know, say me in the comments. Now, Luciana's self-worth was deeply intertwined with her performance and her reputation at work. She moved through every situation, every meeting, as if it was her responsibility alone to remedy every single problem, even if it was below her level or it required her to pitch in on a project last minute. And at the end of most days, Luciana fell into bed at night with her husband, who often went to, hour, went to bed hours before she did, after a long night of just working away at the dining room table. She was constantly exhausted. She felt guilty about falling short as a mother, a team member, a wife, but she kept going anyway, hoping that eventually the stress would just resolve itself. Luciana's story exemplifies what it's like to live with over-functioning, which is a very, very common pattern I see in my work with sensitive strivers. 
So what is overfunctioning? Overfunctioning means that you are taking on too much res responsibility. You are trying to control things that you can't control. When you overfunction, you're trying to fix, you're trying to rescue situations and people because you fear that if you don't do that, no one will. Overfunctioning can masquerade as helpfulness. So for example, overfunctioners are very quick to act. They are usually the first people to raise their hands, to volunteer, to take on an assignment. They enjoy tackling a to-do list and seizing control of a situation. They are usually that coworker who is always willing to lend a hand, to pitch in, or to fix a problem if a project is going sideways. But overfunctioning has a dark side. So some signs of overfunctioning that you may be able to identify in yourself, absorbing the emotions of your boss, team members, your family, and being overly focused on other people's problems, worrying about other people's perceptions of you, being preoccupied with what other people think of you, changing your opinions, changing your actions in an attempt to make people happy or keep the peace, being overly accommodating. You may readily reschedule a meeting to a time that doesn't actually work for you. You may be the first to give up your personal time to do something for work. Some other signs of overfunctioning, beating yourself up for never doing enough or never being productive enough, struggling to relax, to sit still, or actually enjoy your downtime. Perfectionism and overfunctioning also go hand in hand. So when you're overfunctioning, it's almost as if you're trying to get an A plus in everything that you do, but you feel like a failure if you fall short of that. And avoiding asking for help because you worry that asking for help will make you appear weak or like you don't know what you're doing. Now, most of all, overfunctioning manifests as doing tasks for other people that they can do, their, do themselves. So in the workplace, this can look like you know, remaining involved in basic administration tasks or daily execution, even when you're a high-level leader. Constantly reminding your team, your coworkers about due dates instead of letting them manage themselves. Researching information when someone else can look it up for themselves. Having goals for your team or the people around you that they don't actually desire. So I want to know if you relate to this, if any of this is sounding familiar from you for you. So say yes in the chat, share with me how many of these signs stood out to you as familiar. So it may be becoming clear why I refer to overfunctioning as heroing. You are constantly in a fear-based reactive state where you are trying to save everyone around you like the hero, right? You're trying to maintain some semblance of control or validation and security by trying to do everything. The problem is when you assume too much responsibility, it creates a dynamic where other people can underfunction. So you become like the student in a group project, the one person in a group project who ends up doing all the work and then feels resentful for having to do all the work. When you assume responsibility for fixing situations, rescuing other people, they don't have to do their part. They don't have to step up, step up, which can be very frustrating, but it can also be very damaging. So as a result, it can lead to this constant pace, this constant fast pace, emotional sacrifice, which is why overfunctioning goes hand in hand with emotional overwhelm and burnout. So what do we do about this? How do you stop overfunctioning? Now, overfunctioning is a habit that takes a long time to be set in place. So it takes some time to unravel. This isn't as easy as flipping a switch, snapping your fingers, and it happens overnight. But that doesn't mean you have to continue being a victim to this. So I want to give you some small steps you can start taking today to stop overfunctioning. So first is to shift your thinking. You may feel like you're being generous and helpful by agreeing to do something by overfunctioning, but in actuality, it's coming at the expense of your own mental health and the quality of the relationships you have around you. So overextend yourself, overextending yourself and carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders isn't good for you 
nor does it allow the people around you to step up, to grow, to lead themselves in the way that they need to. Second, observe your patterns. So we know self-awareness is always, always the first step to change. So pay attention to your behavior. When do you find yourself taking on more than your fair share of the workload or responsibility in a project or a relationship? So in particular, I want you to look for situations where you feel an outsized sense of resentment. Resentment is a very strong emotional signal that you feel overworked, underappreciated, or otherwise not recognized for your efforts, right? It's that strong emotional signal that can guide you towards specific situations that need changing. Three, update on helpful mental scripts. Overfunctioning is driven by deeply held but unhelpful beliefs that we have about the way the world should work, how we should navigate our responsibilities. So for example, you may believe that your duty as a manager is to provide air cover for your team. In other words, you think that you need to take on small monotonous tasks that are frankly below your pay grade because you need to protect your team's time beneath you. So in Luciana's case, the client I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, one reframe she embraced was to consider that she was doing a disservice to the company by doing this. By spending all of her time on lower value work, she wasn't fulfilling the organization's objectives. She was letting the executive team and the board down. So she began to value her own time, began to value her own efforts more. She freed up time to focus more bandwidth on strategic, bigger picture work that could make a larger impact. So I want you to consider for yourself, what stories, scripts, what rules have you been holding yourself to that are no longer helpful, true, or, or serving you? What rules need to be updated or refreshed to allow you to be at your best professionally and personally? Okay, four. Teach people how to treat you. You have probably been conditioned, or rather you have probably conditioned the people around you, your boss, your coworkers, your friends, your family. You have probably conditioned them to treat you like a pushover. They probably have come to regard you as the person who's always there, the person who always says yes, the one who's willing to be overly accommodating to change your preferences and desires to meet theirs. The good news is that these relationship dynamics, they can be changed, but it requires you begin to respect your time and energy first and foremost, because you can't expect other people to honor your boundaries unless you uphold them first. So that may mean creating blocks of time on your calendar and actually sticking to them without allowing others to book over them. Ending work at let's say 6 p.m. and communicating to others that you will not be checking email after that. So setting these very simple but clear expectations at the beginning of a project or at different intervals of your relationship can really help you be clear about what you can and cannot contribute. Okay, five is to recruit help from others. So get better at delegation. Take it slow at first. You want to look for opportunities where others can take on small pieces of work that you are currently doing. You also need to coach your colleagues and your team members. So instead of automatically fixing a situation for them, automatically giving them the answer, engage them in thoughtful questioning, engage them in coaching. Ask about what they've tried so far, what solutions have they considered? How might they approach a problem, right? You will likely be very surprised by how enthusiastic people around you are, how quickly they step up. So delegating and taking a coaching approach empowers others to build their own confidence, their own agency, and frankly, creates greater efficiency because you're not in the middle of everything and you're not slowing things down. So it's important though that within this process, you be comfortable letting others make mistakes, letting them do things imperfectly, letting them fail, frankly, and letting them approach solving problems in a way that's different than you might approach it. Like I said, over-functioning, overcoming over-functioning, it takes time. 
And if you would like support in doing that, if you want to accelerate that process and you need support getting out of your own way and avoiding mistakes, then I want you to check out Resilient. It is open for enrollment right now for a limited time. Enrollment closes this Tuesday. And like I said, this is a three-month program that is going to help you regain your confidence, master your emotions, and reach your full potential at work as a sensitive striver. So inside Resilient, you get a customized curriculum. You get direct access and coaching from me. You get a private high-level community of other sensitive strivers that serve as your brain trust, all to help you take life-changing steps forward in your career and, more importantly, gain the inner peace and the confidence that you deserve. So I have done everything I can to stack this program with the value and everything you need to move from insecure to empowered. So the program includes weekly group coaching calls to help you take action and be accountable for your goals. We have live office hours every week, which is an opportunity to ask questions from me and get additional coaching. You get access to my proprietary Strive Diagnostic to help you assess your own opportunities for growth. Each week, we have powerful mini lessons on certain topics, things like assertiveness and saying no, overcoming imposter syndrome, trusting your judgment, all sorts of different topics. Those also come along with workbooks to help you document your insights, keep track of your process, your progress, and keep all of your insights organized. We have a coaching tools library with tons of templates and scripts and exercises for you. You also get lifetime access to all of the program materials, so you can come back to them again and again. So if you enjoyed this mini training today, then this is just a teeny tiny taste of what we cover inside Resilient. And if you are have an inkling, a nudge to join, now is the time. This is the final time this program will ever be run in the current format, fully live with weekly calls and direct access to me. It will reopen later in the spring. And at that time, it will be a asynchronous self-paced video course. So if you want to join, head to this link, melodywilding.com backslash resilient. I will also make sure that is in the comments here. Now, the spots for this program tend to go fast. So you want to make sure you get in now. We're almost completely filled up. So if you are a sensitive striver who has felt alone in your struggles, if you have felt alone with struggling with self-doubt, overwhelm, overthinking for years or may maybe decades, now is the time to use your sensitivity as a strength instead of letting it hinder you. Because nobody knows what the rest of 2022 is going to bring. It's already, in the first couple of weeks, brought a lot of uncertainty and surprises. But being resilient means that even if things don't go exactly to plan, you will be able to bounce back without the worry, self-criticism, the inner upheaval you feel right now. And being resilient doesn't just help you. It helps everyone around you. It means you can serve and support your team, your colleagues, your family so much better. So you deserve that sense of renewed confidence and to trust yourself more. So before I let you go, I want to ask you, how much longer can you afford to lose hours and hours to setbacks that send you down a negative thought spiral? How much longer can you bear that inability to turn off at the end of the day? How much more do you want to deal with the damaged confidence, the constant self-criticism, missing opportunities because of imposter syndrome? It doesn't have to be this way. And in Resilient, we can help you. So again, I will put that link in the comments for you. We would love to have you join us. There are just a few spots available. And I would love to hear what out of this training resonated with you today. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you soon.